Yesterday evening here on the news with Rick Sanchez, we broke the story that the Iranians and the Russian navies are planning exercises in the Strait of Hormuz later this year. These exercises have the potential of massively curtailing U.S. naval power in the region, and it's designed in part, according to the Iranians, as a way to send a signal to Washington and to London, by the way, that Iran and Russia, with the encouragement of China, have just as much right to be in those waters as anybody else. Joining us now from uh, Tehran okay. is uh, Mohammed Marandi. He is a uh, professor at the uh, University of uh, Tehran. Uh, professor, are you surprised to see Russia partnering with your country? Not really. I think the United States has brought about this situation by antagonizing so many different countries simultaneously. Uh, the United States acts as a catalyst to improve relations between these different countries. Uh, the sanctions imposed on Russia, um, largely due to the efforts of Trump's opponents, the antagonism towards China and the trade war, and of course the ongoing hostilities towards Iran. Uh, I think all of these bring these different countries together. So uh, the strengthening of Iranian-Russian ties, which uh, exists uh, as a result of Syria, as a result of uh, U.S. sanctions against both countries and a host of other uh, reasons. They have been constantly growing throughout the last few years. And just recently, the uh, Russian security chief called Iran a Russian ally. Let me ask you a question about the situation there. Yesterday, President Rouhani said, peace with Iran is the mother of all peace, but war with Iran is the mother of all wars. Uh, he said this on the same day that uh, your country unveiled essentially three new missiles, all of them guided rockets, one of which can be fired from an aircraft. I ask you this to try and get the sense of whether you feel, living in Iran right now, that your country is on a war footing? I don't think so. I think, obviously, economically speaking, the United States is waging war on women and children, is carrying out economic terrorism. And the Europeans have, by appeasing the United States, they're a part of this war, even though they say they're opposed to it, but they allow American sanctions to effectively be implemented. Um, and uh, therefore, yes. There is a we are that there is a war of sorts going on. But if you mean a hot war, no, I don't think anyone here takes that seriously. The Iranians have been preparing themselves for a possible American attack since the illegal Iraq invasion in 2003, and uh, the Iranians have been developing underground uh, installations uh, from the Iraqi border to the Strait of Hormuz, all the way to the border uh, with Pakistan. And uh, Iran's military defense capabilities have been developed, as we saw with the downing of the most expensive U.S. drone, which cost twice a, as much as an, an F-35, which was in Iranian airspace. So Iran um, has prepared itself for such a, uh, an, uh, a, an attack by the United States. And of course, one difference that we see today from 20, 30 years ago is that Iran is no longer isolated. The United States would be very vulnerable uh, across the West Asian region, from the Red Sea to the Mediterranean to the Hindu Kush uh, American forces. The Saudis and the Emiratis would be in deep trouble. Oil and gas installations in the Persian Gulf would be destroyed, tankers would be destroyed, the global economy would collapse. I don't think the Emirates would last for more than a few days, and the Saudis would probably fall soon after that. And you'd see the Yemenis and Iraqis uh, rushing into uh, Saudi Arabia. And there's, I don't think that the Americans could co control the situation, let alone the millions of people who will be fleeing for Europe as a result of war. So that it would be a catastrophic situation that the Americans can't control, and they would lose as much as anyone else. And therefore, sane, it, the, the belief in Tehran is that there are enough sane people in the United States to recognize that. But there are two countries that cannot stand Iran. One of them is uh, Israel, and uh, the other one is Saudi Arabia. How much influence do you think they have on the Trump administration? They have a lot of influence. Of course, Israel has much more influence. 
but uh, yes, that's true. The Iranians uh, are deeply opposed to the Israeli regime. The Iranians consider it to be the equivalent of apartheid in South Africa, and that it is morally uh, um, unacceptable to continue to oppress the Palestinian people in this manner. And therefore, the Israelis have a deep hostility. Saudi Arabia, on the other hand, is a family dictatorship that's been supporting extremist groups, Wahhabism, meaning the ideology of al-Qaeda and ISIS and the Taliban. And therefore, it's obvious that they, too, like the Israelis, would have a deep antagonism towards Iran. Thank you so much, Professor. We appreciate you sharing your uh, commentary on the situation that has uh, just developed over the past uh, 48 hours. Once again, thank you. So you haven't heard that we're the ones covering the stories that you won't see covered anywhere else? In Venezuela, Kazakhstan, let's go to Hong Kong. And the media reaction to that has been crickets. How about the way we cover those stories? What the hell does that mean? Huawei, Huawei, Huawei. That's the key word in this case, uprising. Keep? Can you believe that? Watching. This is the right thing for members of the media to do, to actually pick sides. Look, if you like what you see, subscribe.